All right, I'm going to attempt to keep this video as short as reasonably possible, considering the pile of knives I have next to me that I want to share with you. In fact, I've got so many knives, I needed to make this video in my backyard rather than try to stuff them all in a backpack just to take them out to the woods to uh, give you a look at them, because this is not a review of any of these knives. This barely even a preview. It's more of a show and tell to let you know what I'm testing and what I'll be reviewing over the next couple of months. Now, I have had a number of these knives out in the woods all winter long, testing them out. In fact, a few of them I actually tried to make review videos on, but it just didn't work out for a variety of reasons. Biggest reason is the wood that I like to saw down and then uh, baton with my knives and carve was all frozen under a lot of snow, a lot of snow, but that's all gone now. So I should be able to get started. And I have been, I've been testing, as I say, so I you trust me when I say these will have considerable amount of use before I actually bring the reviews to you. All right. So how am I going to do this to keep this moving? I'm going to kind of break it into categories a little bit, if you will. And uh, I think that seems to make sense. So the category, I think the first one is everybody's favorite budget knives. The knives I'm about to show you, some of them were sent to me for testing and review. And some of them I just purchased on my own because I thought they were be worth sharing with you at re very reasonable prices. All right, let's get started. First two knives are going to be from BPS out of Ukraine. It's the BPS-1 and the BPS-3. And honestly, right off the top, I can't remember which one I've got in my hand. If this is the BPS-1 or 3, I'll put it on the screen to correct it. But having said that, what does that look like? So if you have ever wondered what it'd be like to hold a full tang, wood-handled Mora Companion, you know, that's exactly what that is. To me, that's what it looks like. We'll see how it tests out or reviews out. There's a nice, nice leather sheath that, of course, BPS does, right? And the other BPS knife. This one is a, uh, a wood lore clone. Looks very much like the Condor bush lore in many ways. This one is in stainless steel. I have not tried their stainless steel before, so that'll be an interesting comparison as well. All right, let's put that a knife away, and you can see nice leather sheath with dangler on that one. All right, the next two are from Beavercraft. It's the Beavercraft Dune and the Beavercraft Glacier. Now, I was surprised that Beavercraft even wanted to send these to me because I reviewed one of their other knives and I really crapped on it, to be quite honest. I mean, it had some redeeming value, but overall, I really did not like the like the knife. When I sent them to review, lo and behold, they said, great, do you want a couple more? Now, I was skeptical based on that first knife from Beavercraft, but these are an entirely different animal altogether. The sheaves are high quality. The designs, very reasonable. Now, they won't appeal to everybody, but they did to me. Uh, the construction, spot on. And again, very, very good for the money. Again, from Ukraine. So this is the Dune. Yes, I believe this is the Dune. <laughs> like I say, it's been a while. So I will make sure that this goes, or the correction, if I'm wrong, it will go in the video description. This one is one of the knives that I've been testing for quite a while, as you can see. Hardwood handles, a little bit of paracord, and look at this sheath. Another high quality leather sheath. This sheath alone is something I probably would have paid the price of the whole knife and sheath together for if uh, I was looking for a sheath, replacement sheath. Where's the other one? And this is the other one, either the Dune or the Glacier. It's a bit smaller, but otherwise very similar in nature and design. In fact, honestly, this is the one I prefer out of the two of them. But we'll get to the review and I'll explain why at that point. Also, another nice leather sheath with dangler there. All right, what else do I have? Okay, so the next couple of knives I purchased myself. And this one I was alerted to by... Uh, Jeff Allen at Off The Grid Iron. He's another Canadian YouTuber. He asked me if I had ever heard of this knife. I had not. I looked it up. I said the cost was right. I bought it and this is what it is. It's a Mora clone, a Mora clone, but it has some differences. Now, it, this is in a, a uh, entry level stainless steel, but when I'm in use, I'll tell you it's it's it's, it's, it's reasonable, for, especially for the money. Now, I don't know how long the tang in this. I suspect it's not a full tang knife. This is not going to be a hard use knife. But that handle 
is so much different from the Mora's that this is going to be worth looking at. Comes in a very Mora-like sheath. Let me put the knife back in. It has a rotating belt clip on it. That's something Mora doesn't have, right? But otherwise, it looks a lot like a Mora. What is this? Oh, yeah, I didn't even say. This is the Izonda. Izonda. It'll be in the video description with the link to where I purchased it on Amazon. Now, I happened to be at Decathlon one day recently buying something else, and I became aware of this knife, and I said, okay, for that price, I've got to have it and share it with you guys. So this is another Mora kind of clone made by, so or made, yeah, I guess you can call it, the company is Solenac out of uh, France. Of course, it's made in China, just like the other knife is. It's the same stainless steel that the Azonda had, but it's a, they refer to this as a hunting knife. Yeah, I don't think so. I think this is more of a bushcraft knife. Look at the tip on that. Look how fine that is. And it came razor sharp. Now, one of the, uh, let me share the sheath. This is very much a sheath you might see a mora on. It's interesting. One of the things that they claim is this has an extended tang. Not, they don't say full tang. It's a hidden tang, but it comes better than three quarters of the way down the handle. This should be a good, strong knife. Again, this is not something I would recommend doing a lot of batoning with, but I haven't eaten, okay, yes, I have done some playing with it, but I haven't put it through any hard paces yet. I will before we get to the review. So I did buy this one as well. And yes, it did come with this piece of paracord on. It's a little bit different. They call it, a, I think it's intended for a lanyard. You don't need a lanyard on this, this knife. All right, two more knives in the budget category. And these are from Poland. And these are handmade knives in Poland. Uh, this one is called the Modern Puko. This is made in HCR, thir HCR 13. Oh, no, sorry. The, no, much, much better. 80 CR V2. Very good high carbon steel that takes a good heat treat and has known to be very tough and very good at age holding for what it is. And I say that, of course, because it's still a well, ADCR V2. I mean, a lot of the best, most popular knives these days are made of that steel, but it's all about the heat tree. This is small, as you can see. This is the Zapas Modern Puko. Again, links for this in the video description below. It is small, but you know, it's, it's kind of like a small carving knife, or a small bushcraft knife for sure. Sheath, leather, nice quality leather sheath. All right, put that one away. Same company. The other end of the spectrum, a huge, uh, it's got, a, I'd say, survival knife. The, they refer to it as a bushcraft knife. Now, it's, it's more of a survival knife that you can do bushcraft tasks with. This is the expendable, yeah, the expendable with a stone wash finish. This is made of MNV steel, which is the European designation for what we know as O2 carbon steel, quite thick. Look at the handles, eh? Good size, fits my hand. A little thin, but you know, it, it is slab sided. It's not rounded or, or contoured, as you can see down the end. Kydex sheath, relatively well made. Now, I've got to say one thing negative about this right off of the top is that if I, I'm actually, I'm a little afraid to hold it like this. If I shake it, it will come out of the sheath. Uh, but I may have a workaround for that when it comes time to actually start using it because I'm a little afraid that if I go down on the ground, this is going to follow. But if I do the modification that I'm thinking of, I'll show you that and, and I'll probably demonstrate it falling out of the sheath without it. But beyond that, very reasonably priced and I expect with O2 steel that's well heat treated, going to be very tough, good hard use knife. Okay. Those are my budget knives. Let's move on to the next category. All right, moving right along. This next collection of knives is a little bit mixed. There's no specific category here. And the first knife is one that I brought to you in an unboxing type of a preview video. And that, of course, is the Scandinav Nordic Protector. And yes, I heard you loud and clear. No more unboxings, Mark. Nope, no more unboxings, not for me. Even if the company does send me any other knives, I'll do them as full reviews. And, just because that's the way you want to want me to do it. I like this a lot. It has a lot, it's different, but it has a lot of redeeming value and characters to it that I think um, you'll like. Review coming. This will be one of the ones that'll come pretty soon, I think. All right, on top of that, 
I did a review of another knife called the QSP Bison. In fact, I did two reviews because they had sent me one and then they sent me an updated version that had a bit of a longer handle on it. Made all the difference in the world for handling it. They also sent me a tiny little neck knife called the Canary. And it's, and I said at that time, it's cute. Well, it's also very functional, of course, and I love the design. Well, apparently it was popular design, popular enough that they just increased the size and made it a full size knife. Look at that beauty right there, eh? Wow. Yeah, I love the full flat grind. Uh, it's a, a moderately high carbon stainless steel, but I'll talk more about that when I can remember. Look at the handles, I love that canvas micarta on it. Great knife, sheath, nice Kydex sheath with a rotating belt clip on it, quite serious detent, so it gives you some different ways of carrying it. Yeah, this is going to be a winner. I really think it will be. All right, so we'll put that one aside. Um, okay, so this is going to be a bit different. The next two knives I'll show you. The first off is this one. This is the Demco Free Rain. And you're saying, but Mark, you already reviewed the Demco Free Rain. And yes, I have. This one is made in the U.S. as opposed to Taiwan. This is made in Magna Cut Steel. It's the first knife that I have owned that is made in Magna Cut Steel. The sheath is just like the other one, of course, different handle colors and different sheath colors. All right, so what's the deal here? My intent is, is when I go to do the review, uh, there are some subtle differences in the construction of the knife and the design, mostly in the blade, not in the handle. The handle is identical. That well, they're so subtle that you really, it doesn't make a difference, certainly not functionally. But what I'm going to be doing is doing hard use testing of those two knives side by side to see just how much of a difference Magna Cut Steel makes over the stock steel on the regular free range. So that's my intent with this knife. So that will be a, a heavy use video when I get to that one. On the same line is a knife that, boy, this one, this review really... Uh, gets a lot of comments, a lot of views, and mostly because it was a bit controversial the way I programmed it, and that was the Cold Steel SRK. So at that time, it was loaned to me by my friend Derek Croft. Uh, he gave, loaned it to me for testing. I did test it. I gave you my review on it. I since bought it from Derek because, well, it was brand new when he gave it to me, but it wasn't by the time I was finished with it. So I decided ju just to buy it from him and keep it in my collection because it did have redeeming value. It just wasn't, I wasn't as, uh, how should I, confident, especially in the tip of it, that I am in some other knives. Well, Derek bought another knife. This one he bought was the Cold Steel SRK in 3V. And this is a different knife, CPM 3V steel. This is really something. It's not hollow ground. It is a full saber with flat grinds on the primary bevel. It's actually almost cutting sharp on the switch. Wouldn't take much to make that cutting sharp at all. Uh, this is like an entirely different knife, the way it's constructed. The quality of this is altogether different. This one really feels good in the hand. Same deal as I'm going to do with the Demco Free Rain is do some... Uh, I'm not abusive, but hard use testing. I want to test to see if the 3V, the CPM 3V steel, is that much better than the SK-5 steel that's on, the, the SK-85 as they call it now, on the regular, uh, uh, because of course this is much more expensive a knife. So, you know, is it worth upgrading to the CPM 3V? If money was not an issue, it would be for me. But uh, as I said, you've got to be able to decide that for yourself. So I'll do a hard use test between the two of them and see how they make out. All right, so those are two. Okay, a couple of more. All right, the next two knives are similar in the sense that they were both originally military designed knives, which because of their designs lend themselves very well to bushcraft. They both have, our, um, how should I say, modern interpretations of the classic Puko style, and that's and they're both Finnish made knives as well. The Rocco, um, yeah, I'm going, going to absolutely say this wrong. Cor, Corpusatori, Corpusatori, the Rocco Corpusatori, 
80 CRV too, but at like 61 HRV, this is a full Scandi. That's, there's no, okay, there's a bit of a stropping secondary on it, but that's only uh, the only secondary. It's a, otherwise a full Scandi zero grind knife. Oh my goodness, does this ever cut. Nice rubberized handle, made to be military tough, but how well will this work for bushcraft? Well, that'll be part of the testing. Uh, I will tell you, I'm not a fan of the sheath. It's the same material my Kupilka cups are. There's a name for this material. It's an infusion of thermoplastics and pine wood materials. Not a fan of the uh, the attachment on the back. I'm not a fan. It's a super tough sheath, but it's just it goes in really hard to get that click. And once it's in there, it's hard, it's staying in there. It's not falling out, but it takes quite a bit of pressure to get it out again. But that's okay. Maybe I'll get more and more used to it. As you can see, look how high that's going to ride on my belt. So uh, I actually have a dangler that I'll be using when I do carry this out in the woods. Oh, well, that's a cool one. And the other one, the Pelotonin Ranger. This is the M05 model, also made of 80 CR V2. Uh, very well heat treated. And uh, yes, you can probably see marks on it. I have been using it already. Military grade, tough but this should work very well as a bushcraft knife. Now, this one leans a little bit more towards the survival because it is a five inch blade, but just barely five inches. I think people would not mind using this for all their bushcraft tasks as well as knowing that it's tough enough for survival. The sheath, boy, this is, this is a little bit different. There's a rotating, roll, not rotating, rolling lock on it. So when you put it in, it actually rolls on that lock and it's in place hard. Heavy grade sheath as well, military usage of course. I do believe this one comes with an optional leather sheath if you're interested in it. The next group of knives are all from the same company, Work Tough Gear. It's the largest collection I have here to show you right now. Some of these I recently showed you in what I called a public service announcement video where um, I wanted to let you know of, of the upcoming drop for some of them. And one of them, of course, is the design that I was involved with with Alex from Aurora Borealis Knives. All right, so let's quickly go through those. Actually, why don't we start with the ones from Alex as well because uh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm proud of this, the Voyager. Mentioned it before, this is the Voyager. It is designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives in Quebec, but I did have input into it to a degree. But let's, let's be clear, it is Alex's design. Boy, I've started testing this. What a, what a knife. Okay, this is an instant classic is the way I'm saying this. This will be a big seller for Work Tough Gear. So might as well stay on theme with the knives from Work Tough Gear and Alex's design. The Forester Generation 2 in Scandi. Yes, it does have a polished micro bevel on it, so it's not a true full Scandi. So it's, but it is a bit more heavy duty, improved in a number of ways. Nice, nicer handles on it, thumb scallops on it. Shown this one already, and this one will be reviewed. I think I'll probably do the review separately because the other Forester that I showed you is this one in a high saber. Really, this has become well, right now, it's my favorite knife in terms of the uh, Forrester series. And uh, I can see carrying this a lot, a lot, just because of its universal design is the best way to describe it. Nice sheath, of course, as always from Work Tough Gear. All right, the next two knives are also from Work Tough Gear, and these were designed by Zeke Minacho. Now, I've reviewed a few of few of Zeke's designs before, including his Nomad EDC, a small knife with a nice rounded blade on it. Very, very interesting design. And uh, that'll be, of course, in my playlist if you're interested. Well, Zeke has come out with some variations on the Nomad EDC. And these are the Nomad Bushcrafters. They sport exactly the same handles, but in two different blade styles. So first off is this one. It's, it's referred to as a full flat grind, understandably so, but if you look right at the very top, let me just see if I can catch the sun on it, you can see there's a tiny bit of flat at the very top. So it's not a true full flat grind, but for all intents and purposes, it is. It's, it's actually a high saber. Look at that unique handle, right? So that's the same as the original EDC, Nomad EDC. This is a Nomad Bushcrafter full flat grind. Very interesting knife. I have this one set up with the belt loop that comes with them. 
The other one is also a Nomad bushcrafter, but this one is in Scandi Grime. Bit different, bit smaller blade overall. Uh, look at that apocalyptic finish on that. Kind of has a copperish tone on it as well. Something new that Vic is trying out at Work Tough Gear. Exactly the same handle. So it'll be interesting to see how well this works as a carving knife. It's got quite a curve on the front of that. So yeah, all right, there's only one way to know is to, to check it out and try it. Tech lock on this one, because this one is actually easy enough to carry as EDC on my belt like this. So that works out pretty good. Now, two more designs. These are, at, oh, I missed one from Alex. I mentioned this, I showed it in that other video, the hoplite spearhead. So not a knife, could be a knife, could be a neck knife, but it's a, a spearhead. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if I can get that attached to a staff and then use it as a bit of a spear for testing at least. All right, what have I got here? Oh, just two more knives from Work Tough Gear. Both of these are actually designed by Vic Lin. Vic does his own designs and uh, they're amazing, all of them. Uh, this one I've been looking at for a while. This one is known as the Red Wolf. That's a bit of a larger knife and not a sweet design overall. High, high saber. Again, you can just see a little bit of flat at the top but in full convex, right down to the edge, full convex, no secondary grind on this at all. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Vic does really nice, well-contoured grips on his knives in a sheath with a belt loop on it. And the other knife from Vic, very interesting. And when I looked at it, I said, I like it, I don't like it. I like it, I don't like it. And the more I look at it, I said, yeah, actually, I do like it the Uniheart, and this is Vic's interpretation, a modern uh, interpretation of the Kephart knife. It has some of the same features. I'll really I'll keep that, of course, for the review, but overall, it's again, a high saber grind. It's exactly the same grip that Vic uses on all of his knives, or most of his knives, not all of them, not the really big ones, of course. Amazing feel in the hand. So we'll see what this modern interpretation does as far as bushcraft goes. All right. All right, the last couple of items I have for you have sharp cutting edges, but they're not knives. So let's get going. This one is from Beavercraft, and this is a curved gouge, and I will be doing probably a Cooksa with this. We'll see how that works out. Played with it a little bit, and it is very functional, and what I like about it is, of course, it is quite budget in nature if you're looking to get into it. Now, it did not come with a sheath, so I just made something up with duct tape, which is functional, if not pretty, but it, at least it works so you don't dull the edge or cut yourself if you're gonna put it in your back. Now, the last two things, I've had these for some time and I have been testing them, so now it has been time to do a review. And these are from the German company Adler, and they are axes or hatchets, depending on how you wanna call them, just trying to get the sheath off. This one has seen quite a bit of use. That German pattern head on it, well made and still very reasonable in price. Yeah, this is nice. Now, if you think that one is nice, let me just put that aside, put the mask back on. Oh, let's show you the mask. Leather mask, don't snap and wrap around strap on it. So I'm gonna put that back out of the way. And the other one, same head, longer handle, exactly the same. Unsnap it, and again, this one has been in the woods quite a bit as well. So that's what they wanted to do. I asked them to send me one. They decided they wanted to send me two because they wanted to see or get my impressions of what it would be like with the same axe head, same weight, but a different length handle. This is the canoe axe is what they refer to it as. It's a nice size, bit light in the head. I wonder if the weight is on this. No, all right, but of course I will have the links in the video description. You can go and take a look at them. Yes, they do come with painted handles with texture grip on it. You know, I considered taking that off, but I'm leaving it on at least for the testing because it's not abrasive. It's not bothering my hands at all. And it does provide good traction, although I know you really don't need to or you shouldn't have to use it, but it's providing good traction and it just looks attractive, at least now. Well, we'll see how it goes in the long run. Very, very well made. 
Okay, let's wrap this video up. All right, so I'm gonna be busy for a while. I'm gonna be taking these knives out and before the end of the summer into the fall, I should have most of them reviewed. Some of them I'm ready to review now because I've been testing them all winter. So I should be able to getting those reviews out a little bit at a time. Uh, yes, this has not been a review video and I apologize if anybody thought it was. It's not even a preview. It's just a show and tell to show you what I'm up against as far as the amount of knives I wanted to get tested. Reviews are coming. Okay, if you have any comments or questions on any of these knives, then please put them in the comments section. As I mentioned, the names and the links to where you can take another look, they'll be in the video description. If you have any suggestions for knives that you'd like me to try out or if I see if I can get my hands on, then put that in the comments section below. All right, get out and explore and take that path, let's travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.